Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalender, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show on Desi 1250 AM, radio that listens to you. Good afternoon, folks. This is Dr. Shalender. 30 along with my co-host Dr. Anju 30. Good afternoon. And uh, Dr. Anju has taken a little bit of vacation. She was gone to India for a couple of weeks. We missed you on the last show Dr. Anju. Yes. So uh, I yeah. really enjoyed the trip uh, but it was really nice and beautiful there. Yeah I can tell you got a little bit more tan. Uh, <laughs> not that you need that but you know you had that beautiful sun and heat of yes. New Delhi and I heard that you attended a couple marriages and that was a wonderful experience, must have been a wonderful experience. It was, it was. So folks, uh, you know, uh, in order to call us at the radio station, uh, the phone number is 1-844-301-1250. Again, 1-844-301-1250. आप हमारे साथ हिंदी, उर्दू और पंजाबी में भी बात कर सकते हैं, बात करने के लिए एक 844 301-1250 पे फोन कर सकते हैं एक बार फिर 1-844-301-1250 to call us at the studio and uh, today's topic is how to prepare the body for the seasonal changes Dr. Yeah, Anju. that is very important like we are going into the spring and through from the la- late winter so it is really important to know how to eat what to eat uh, and how to change the diet so uh, we will be talking about that and we will be talking about some fasting we can do in the spring too because this is the best time to do the fasting right and uh, you know this is uh, uh, one of the very much a concept of ayurvedic medicine you know as you know dr anju that you have uh, studied naturopathic medicine from best year and you also studied homeopathy and along with the uh, Along with the, you know, uh, you have studied uh, uh, Chinese medicine as well. But the concept of seasonal uh, weather is very much like uh, Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic. So, you know, uh, this is only a system uh, where we talk about seasonal routines, according to the constitution that mean what type of your constitution if that's what type of your genetic code in the uh, modern language we can say uh, where we follow the diet telling in a way that not everybody is the same we are very individual and not the same thing can apply to everyone so the seasonal routine falls into that type of routine what we should be doing uh, the idea behind this all the seasonal routine is that how to maintain the optimal health and not to uh, you know have a compromised immune system and getting sick so the folks if you think during the winter time or during these days you are getting sick easily catching cold or your joints are inflaming and you all of a sudden realizing that you're having achiness body ache and uh, you know swelling inflammatory processes the reason for that is because you know the seasons are changing the uh, the uh, weather are totally changing and we need to be preparing ourselves for that so this is the uh, uh, concept of today's talk uh, and uh, you know the way uh, Ayurveda says uh, in the West we are only think there are there are four seasons Right, Dr. Anjali? Yes. You know, mo- mostly we think of summer, uh, fall, winter, and spring. Yeah, and it's actually six. <laughs> <laughs> but in Ayurveda, yeah. we have six seasons. Um, that's uh, because in between time frame, that's from one season to another change, there is a, you know, like early winter and then the real winter, you know, and then early spring and, the you know, early summer. That's the part which we kind of miss in modern uh, 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 systems but that's where we are uh, coming today why we think of six seasons in Ayurvedic medicine and then what you really do during this six season is the concept 
So, uh, you know, the part is called in Ayurvedic medicine called is Ritu Charya. So, what is Ritu Charya? The Ritu Charya means is that Ritu stands for the appointed time season or, you know, time of, you know, just uh, another way of saying is it's a seasonal, you know, it's a season. And Charya means regime or routine. So, in Vedas, time is equated with the conscious timeness. That means with the calls, we always say, is the source of division of time. So, you know, the time is divided. Like uh, 24 hours we have, daytime, nighttime, you know, the midday, midnight. All this is a, you know, process of unite, procession, recession, and stasis in the system. So, it is a way how our, you know, globe, or how our Earth, actually, when it returns and rotates around Earth, these seasonal changes happen. So, you know, that's what gives uh, uh, an uh, uh, idea of uh, Ritu Charya that, uh, you know, one of the uh, idea behind in Ayurvedic medicine about the season is that uh, it helps us to diagnose and, you know, prescribe different things in different times of the year. Like we, when Dr. Anji was, you were saying that, you know, we follow the diet, uh, you know, the, like winter diet is not the same for the summertime. You know, we, we, we change that. We change it. We, uh, like the winter diet should be, more, we, our body likes to eat more heavier food. In the winter time. Winter time. And more we cannot yeah. push that model into the spring no, or not into the and summer. Uh, yeah, and in the late winter, uh, our body starts feeling like we, we don't want any, like a lot of wintry food, like a lot of heavy food. Mm. Uh, in the winter, in the especially in India, like we like to eat um, those, uh, uh, we call it pinni or like the made with a lot of oil, ghee actually. So and those the are the nuts heavy and foods. Seeds yes, and, those, and those are okay to eat in the winter. More warm, more like the, those type food. of warming foods. But as the late winter or the early spring, uh, we want to eat like more vegetables, more fruits. Uh, more like the uh, soups, broths, stews, so that type of stuff, uh, like more little bit on the lighter version. So uh, we will be talking a little bit more about that in a little bit later. Right. So folks, uh, if you have a question, feel free to call us at one eight four four three zero one one two five zero. एक आठ सौ चौतालीस तीन सौ एक बारह पचास पे आप हमारे साथ फोन पे बात कर सकते हैं तो हम बात कर रहे हैं ऋतुचर्या यानी सीजनल रूटीन के बारे में तो हाउ वी कैन बी बेनिफिटेड बाय फॉलोइंग द मेन यू नो हाउ द सीजन चेंजेस एंड द थिंग्स वी कैन डू ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम सो यू नो बेसिकली ऑल दिस सिक्स सीजन आर अराउंड यू नो आर converted between the two parts of uh, the seasons in a way that we have Dakshinayan and Uttrayan. That means southwards and northwards uh, rotations of the earth. So, you know, the, that gives the birth to the three seasons in each sub uh, uh, types of the Dakshinayans and the Northayans or the uh, Uttrayan part. So, you know, as we all know that around June 21st, the first day of the summer, and the longest day of the year, the sun rises not directly in the east. You know, majority time people think that the sun is always rising in the east. Well, of course, if you only think that sun rises in the east, that's the part. But the reality is, on the 21st of June, the sun is rising actually much more toward the northeast direction of the earth. So that means as earth is rotating, uh, Dr. Anju, so the earth's rotation is much more toward the northeast directions and rather than the sun which is fixed in the uh, one place our earth is tilted in northern words so it's much more northeast that's the reason why we have the longest day on the 21st and the uh, same thing the shortest day is the december 21st which is a southward direction of the earth so that is the shortest day in our part of the earth i mean of course we when we talk about the uh, you know the uh, rotation of the earth the longest days, you know, part of the earth, you know, like in Australia, New Zealand and those, uh, you know, uh, the South America side, they have much more longer days during that time. But, but in our half, we have the sh longest day on the June 21st, while those people are having the shortest day. Yes. So that is the just in defining how the rotation of the earth works and how the seasons are changing. So having that an idea, uh, the, the basic idea when the 
earth rotation is happening you know there is a time in between uh, almost about two weeks of time uh, when we are in stagnant position and you know remember we just celebrated makar sankranti on january 15th or something like that every year everybody goes for the uh, ganges uh, bath on makar sankranti that part is that's the real time when we start noticing the change in the rotation until then it's like a status quo for the earth that we are in the similar position not much changes and that week is time is of the two weeks of the frame is the time when our body also exhibits the very very compromised immune system and it doesn't surprise us actually as a physicians we see increased number of people getting sick getting cold and we always tell them all right you know because of your immune system is compromised during this time yeah you're getting sick or you're catching viruses and this year we had a little bit more pronounced uh, viruses and you know people got much more serious cold symptoms and they were coming to the clinic more often so you know the reason is again harsh winters we had yes and along with the compromised immune system which happens during this phase so you know when we see this type of season right now we are in the late winter yes and in 2 uh, 3 weeks we going to have a spring time so right now we are in the position where we are coming to the when the days and nights will be equal like 12 hours day 12 hours uh, you know night and that happens around march 21st so you know that mean our uh, rotation of the earth is going toward the north eastern towards and the days will be getting bigger so in a way we are happy that we're going to see much more light and uh, we already having longer days right i already see the morning times so you know the you know even though sun is not out but the daylight is almost up by 6 o'clock yes. and the sun even though sets early but still we have a daylight so it's close to almost 12 hours so it's not uh, completely that so during this phase uh, now we need to pay attention to how to be you know paying uh, uh what type of food we need to be eating so like dr anju you mentioned that you know this is the phase uh we need to think of getting our body ready for the seasons right the what we are going to f- focus on so the right now we are going to be entering into early spring from the late winter to early spring so the traditional way of uh, you know the way is we consider of doing fasting during the, you know that's a traditional way right yes and uh, we need to start thinking about spring is a season characterized by warmth moisture so uh, we need to think about and it's a, it's a, like a kapha season people who know about the uh, doshas vata pitta and kapha so it's a uh, distinctly kapha season so we need to think about the food like in the winter which is like we are like as i talked earlier that we are having more heavier Heavy food. foods uh, we need to think about starting changing the diet changing the first we need to start eating like more and our it's not like we we sh- our body demands that way our body uh, is not very much interested into the heavy food we want to eat like more vegetables more fruits like little bit of the soup kind of diet uh warm diet but in a lighter uh mean so that is the and the other thing is we need to think about the cleansing dr shilander because spring is the best time to the uh, to do a cleansing uh, we can do the cleansing can be done in a several ways uh, juice fasting we c- we can start with the fasting and uh, like the pomegranate juice is great for the spring cleansing we can start with that and so that can be part of our the fasting like you're thinking you know yes. we we if we going to do fast which is traditional way of uh, detoxifying and in uh, early spring or the spring time is the best time to like you mentioned is to detox and to rejuvenate i think that also corresponds with the uh, nature because in nature everything is growing right the f- trees because are blooming yes. the birds are chirping and birds are ready to procreate and the, you know it's like the body it's is a new regenerate. start we want to prepare the body it's a, like it's something to start new and uh, so fasting is the best way so we can like the because in the winter there is a lot of accumulation 
of the kafa too so, so it's a one way to eliminate one, that one way to eliminate so start with the we can start with the some juice fasting like palm juice is great or the apple juice and uh, also like i think the doing the mono diet like certain type of foods uh, we should be thinking of the less meat meaty foods people who eat meats uh, so like the meat type of food are okay during the winter time winter time it's more heavier because it comes into the heavier in the summer if uh, like in the late uh, late winter or the early spring they should people should think about eating like more the cold water fish uh, rather than eating the poultry and stuff or the red meat or, or the red meat the, is, yeah. yes should be avoided and uh, also like the food which is pungent bitter astringent taste and by eating warm light foods uh, and also easy to digest food are very much uh, like would be appropriate because these type of foods will help to balance mucus production regulate moisture level uh, and serve to open the channels of elimination so uh, critical for purification Right. So what you are saying, Dr. Anju, is like uh, during the winter time, like we do heavy foods, the sweets and red meats and all that. Yes. In Ayurveda, that is considered as these are, they contain the earth element more in that product. Yes. Like even the sweets, the sugars have earth element. Earth element. That's why like the more the bitter pungent foods would be more appropriate. Uh, which does not. That's the light side of the food. Yes. So uh, the earthy foods, when we say need to be avoided i mean they're good for the winter time because we need to have more energy we need to build I and mean, we are not really we are kind of preserving our body during the winter we need to save ourselves i mean um, technically we are in the modern world where if we think about uh, historically when we did not had all these amenities where we did not had all this uh, this type of a heat you know inside door indoor heating people were living in much more an open environment so they had to do these type of foods more aggressively in our age when we have technology uh, technologically advanced uh, living and we have constantly single temperature monitored in the house the houses are maintained on 68 72 degree temperature all the time the requirement definitely changed it does it does so we, we you know we we have we have maintained our diet the way we eat. I mean, if you look into the Western diet, our whole year thing is meat. Meat. A lot of fast food. And in the spring, we have to eliminate completely the fast food. Exactly. So, you know, this is a one way of detoxifying. So, folks, uh, you know, if you are thinking of detoxifying, detoxification, and you have already missed your uh, New Year's resolution, this is time to push. Yes. This is the time when you really say, Okay, now I, we know the spring is a time when everything is budding out. Our body is actually making more cells during the spring yes. time. And that is a, uh, you know, evidence base that during spring time, we are more productive, not only because our body is regenerating cells, but our body is ready to detox also because it pr wants to prepare you for the coming months, which is for the summertime and the Uh, you know to just to ha make everybody ready to I in old times the people were doing farming and heavy labor you know yeah, to and in the when the spring like we we feel like a little bit more like energetic the, right? uh, yeah and but like the, it's a like the late winter like in the spring it slowly 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 we come into the like more energy but in the early spring we might feel like a little bit more, more kapha, sluggish right, more, more because it's a kapha too right so we need to pacify that so uh, but like everybody is different people can have the different doshas too it all depends on that we need to keep that in mind too uh, also like for the process of the purification uh, drinking water like hot water or the warm room temperature water i prefer more the warm water uh, and a little bit of the honey is appropriate to put and the ginger is great to uh, to put that and sipping on that and would be very helpful and especially even when it comes to the honey i mean usually in ayurvedic text is the old honey is better than the fresh honey so that's another concept uh, people might not understand why is that because the old honey is considered actually much more rejuvenative compared to the fresh honey so the uh, science behind again is all these nectars which is collected by the honey bees you know they they get more matured with the timing so they have more medicinal value and more rejuvenative value and more 
immunomodulating. That means it stimulates the immune system. So, you know, I, that's a great uh, suggestion, uh, what you're saying, Dr. Anju. So we want to take a short break, folks, uh, in order for us to call you, uh, call us. So you can call us at 1-844-301-1250. हमें कॉल करने के लिए एक आठ सौ चौतालीस तीन सौ एक बारह पचास पर कॉल करें हम बात कर रहे हैं ऋतुचर्या की और हाउ टू डिटॉक्सीफाई Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at four two five four five three eight zero two two for more information. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Welcome back, folks. This is Dr. Shalender Sodi along with Dr. Anju Sodi. And we are talking about how to prepare your body for the seasonal changes and the seasonal routines. And uh, we were, uh, before the break, we were discussing about how the Ritu Charyas or the seasonal routines need to be uh, done, uh, uh, you know, for your uh, best uh, health. This is a concept which is very unique to Ayurvedic medicine. And, uh, you know, we talk about six season, not the four season, because uh, in uh, uh, Ayurved we have Hemant, and, uh, 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 which is the end of the uh, winter season, which is an additional uh, season and then in between the uh, uh, fall uh, and the winter time there's another season which we call so so anyway so also we have a concept of uh, taste in Ayurveda we call shudras right uh, Dr. Anju the, the six taste six which, we, which we discuss about and these taste actually are very much of medicinal value you know we can't ignore this because they are based on what taste should be actually more emphasized during the season changes so now uh, folks uh, the seasons uh, uh, the taste which we talk about is we talk about sweet sour salty pungent bitter and astringent so you know it's a madhur amal uh, namak or tikt katu kashai ye jo taste hai wo ayurvedic related hai so the uh, the sweet taste actually is a, a combination of uh, earth and water element the panch mahabhut we talk about it gives a quality of heavy slow cold and oiliness in the body and what it does actually it causes the increase in kapha it, that is very much true dr shalanda and it actually helps to balance out the vata pitta so which is the required you know the taste during when we want to balance out the the vata in the or during the winter time so we do have a, a call uh, uh, on the line and we will take that phone call before i go to the another uh, taste so caller go ahead this is dr shalender sodi on the show your body is your natural pharmacy Hello, doctor. yes sir I'm sanjeev. yes sanjeev how are you sir I feel more tired when I have the season change. How can I build up my strength and stay hydrated so I can progress more? Yes, uh, Sanjeev, that's a very good question. The thing is, like uh, we were discussing, what happened is, during the uh, seasonal changes, uh, body goes through a little bit of stressful moment. That means body has a hard time adjusting to the change. So that what happens is with the seasonal changes. So the seasonal change at that time we say the best thing to do is do a fasting. You know, if you Sanjeev remember back in India we do vrat, right? The fast which are seasonal fast sometimes we do during Navratris like nine days of fast or the Amavas fast or the Purnima fast. So we are finding doing yeah. this fast really actually is a giving a system a break from the 
daily type of food which we eat in our traditional <laughs> eatings we are much more engorging on the wheat and rice and the same type of food every day so what we do during seasonal change okay we there is always this type of uh, requirement and you remember probably your grandma or great grandma telling okay during navratris we are not going eat any wheat no grains at all so that's a, like a grain free diet so that's a one way of uh, giving a body break from the routine grains and getting used to the new diet which will be coming that mean the new we preparing to the new season the new vegetables which will be coming so that's a one way of uh, for you to do it so so you don't feel heavy the reason you feel heavy is also basically because you are in a very different environment different change in uh, so that that that's the one thing you want to do is getting used to eating light and little bit more of doing a lighter food which are easy like soups and khichris more vegetables more fruits and uh, it's not recommended to you eat the raw vegetables so but the cooked vegetables would be great uh, like the steamed vegetables would be great vegetables like the cauliflower and the broccoli would be great at this time um, there is mustard leaves uh, would be great at this right time. and if you remember back home we have lots of sag in the mustard growing and people are co- collecting and yeah and, cooking. and also as dr shilander said that avoid wheat and the corn is okay to eat at the but it should be like the non gm or, or organic and uh, the other f- uh, flower like the amaranth flower is great too at this time millet is great at this time quinoa is great at this time so you know the uh, routine grains which we eat you need to be staying away so i hope this helps you uh, and also make taking uh, herbs like ashwagandha is very good for you uh, sanjeev during this time and triffle uh, triffle and ashwagandha are the best uh, two product which you and can take and the pipli is great for the digestion as well as for the congestion the heaviness too so and keep listening to the we will be giving some more info Thank so you. Thank you for calling Sanjeev and yeah. we have one more call waiting and we'll take that call. Caller go ahead. This is Dr. Shilinder Sodi on the show Your Body's Natural Pharmacy. Hi, this is Chetna here. Yes, Chetna. Hello. Yes. Ha, I have a question like I'm using dry food regular in my daily life in the like winter season. So like when the spring comes Do you prefer like we use the as usually like the dry foods like I'm taking pecans and the uh, like mm-hmm. the raisins everything that's are good also in like in the spring season? Uh no okay Chetana so what you are saying is the food ag- exactly you don't want to continue with the food which are the winter type of food. In the winter type of food we do much more of the heavy food and warming food because that's what is required during that's what is the requirement of the body. at uh, during the winter time okay. so so during the as okay. we are switching so think about this now we are in the late winter though you will be still be okay to mm-hmm. do those food but as soon you be entering mm-hmm. into the spring time spring is the con- time mm-hmm. when we need to start switching from the winter food to the little bit of preparing body for the summer time and yeah and uh, okay. uh, as you mentioned that you are eating like more like, pecans and the raisins and stuff but the seeds okay. to favor in the spring time is the pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds would be better chetna okay like uh, w- like which uh, fruits or vegetables uh, like you prefer to use in the spring season it's coming for detoxifying our body too yes it's uh, vegetables to favor is the like the artichoke uh, asparagus uh, broccoli brussels sprouts cabbage carrots um uh, green beans these are the radishes mush- and yeah. all that those mushrooms know. onions these are the great for the and the turnips shalgam is great in the too for the <laughs> spring season too so the uh, chetna if you remember the back home like uh, i was telling to the earlier uh, to the caller that it's a one way of doing a giving a break your system from the r- regular food we eat during the winter time so you know uh, if we do the fasting and all that uh you know we want you to be thinking of stopping those foods for the f- period of 7 days to 9 days and then reintroducing the same food in a different manner yes like uh, uh, in winter time we do much more warm food this time in the spring time you maybe you might get away with the early spring with the similar food 
in the lighter quantity. So But as the season gets into much more into, you know, later spring, that's when you really want to prepare your body f to for the summer time. Yes, and like the winter, as I said, it's a kapha season, it's more. The, and the, in the Ayurveda, likes increases like. So, uh, like if we eat, mo keep on eating the more heavier food, uh, our kapha imbalance will be more. So, uh, also in the fruits, like the, you should be avoiding like oranges, banana, pineapple, those type of fruits should be right, reduced. Right, because again, that's the qu question of the taste which is present in these fruits. Like we are talking about, we don't want to do too much of sweet and sour or salty foods in this f uh, time frame because they are considered as a heavy food and they uh, really can aggravate the water in the body yes. and you know so we don't want to do that and also it, it, that will lead to much more dryness and the water symptoms in the body and also in the vegetables your question was to avoid would be like uh, n not to avoid but a little bit less on the more the watery heavy vegetables like avocado cucumber uh, sweet potatoes zucchini should be a little bit uh, need to reduce it or i will say if you do want to eat add a yeah. little bit ginger to it ginger and, and turmeric turmeric uh, those are the foods which balances our that's another energetic way of balancing the diet yes so thank you Chetna and uh, keep listening okay. and you will be getting more info. All right. So folks, those were the very two good questions yeah, which we it's got. Yeah, really uh, uh, yes. And uh, Dustin, our, uh, uh, you know, the, the studio engineer is saying he's getting hungry after uh, listening to all the things which he's discussing or we are discussing here. So this is actually not his fault because we are at the peak of the day, which yes. is the noon time. And our digestive fires are much stronger. Very important. And so it needs to be actually, I always say, you, you need to respect those desires. So that means if you feel hungry, you should eat. <laughs> and uh, lunchtime is actually the biggest meal of the day. Uh, so we should eat the biggest meal uh, during the lunchtime. That's a part of the Ritucharya as well, which is the topic of the day. So the other taste which we talk about is the sour, or we call it amal, is actually a combination of a fire element and earth element, you know, Dr. Anju. So, uh, a, though it uh, helps to alleviate the water, but it actually creates the imbalance in pitta and kapha. Yes. So, again, we don't want to create an imbalance in pitta during the, when we are preparing our body for the summertime. Because yes. why? In the nature, the fire element will be higher. So, yes. you don't want to uh, give more fire to the system which is already going to be there. So, it creates some sort of uh, autoimmune responses inflammatory processes you know any inflammatory process in the body at that time will be considered as a pitta imbalance so you know we need to balance that out so that's the reason when we are saying okay we don't want you to do too much of acidic food is that the reason we don't want to imbalance that right and then also the s you know we talk about the salt actually salt is a biggest culprit because everybody kind of get used to the salt and you know they have a too much of a uh, uh, fire and water element in it as well, Dr. Anju. And, you know, some of us are more salty and other yeah, people and are more are, sweet. You are pointing at me. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just not pointing. I'm telling that's the weakness of actually, even in survey, we are finding people who do more salt actually get addicted to the salt. Yes. It's body's natural response to have a high salt, high sodium so, uh, element in the diet and which is actually not very healthy some of us can get away those are uh, you know women usually can get away with a little bit extra salt because they tend to run a low blood pressure but on the other side guys can't because they have tend to run a high blood pressure it's a natural phenomenon i don't know why god has made us that way but that's what it is so you know we need to be a little bit uh, controlling the salt because salt actually can again build up more with pitta and kapha and we usually call water retention. Yes. So that's a, again sign of a kapha buildup in the body, and we don't want that. And you know, actually, it can lead in individuals in hypertension. We call in Ayurveda uch rakat chap. That means the the uh, the pattern of the blood flow in the system is kind of have a little bit choppy. That means it gives you a high beat, and that's what is the high blood pressure is that it exerts the external pressure onto the arteries and that's what we are fo facing more so salt intake has to be lower and all those yogis uh, i'm sh i you know they actually avoid salt you know 
and the you know we usually uh, look at the yogis as that they are kind of uh, you know sign of uh, good health and they tend to live long life and they eat actually very little salt or if any some of the yogis i know they don't even consume salt at all so you know that's the reason why we don't want to do this and then we have the pungent taste pungent taste is much more fire and air combination of the element and it actually helps to balance out the kapha so that will be the taste dr anju you are talking about when we want to consider during the early spring and the late spring time to consider much more of the pungent taste yes and that actually also uh, i- if you do too much of that it can create a imbalance in pitta vata as well but you know ac- accordingly again if you do during the season in the spring time you can get away even if you do extra then we have the bitter taste which is again a uh, combination of uh, akash and vayu uh, element the ether and air element and it leads to again um, uh, kapha and pitta uh, balance it creates that and which actually the reality is in the winter time we uh, put on extra weight because of all the heavy food so now it's time to balance that out so you know that's why you want to do and some of the bitters are very commonly i recommend is you know bitter melon which is v- commonly available and uh, you know that's a very common food in uh, indian kitchens and also very much se- in season you know you can eat the bitter melon and really enjoy and there's lots of medicinal value to the bitter melon it helps to balance out the kapha and actually lower the sugar content in the body and yeah and it's like because uh, as we talked earlier like the winter accumulation of the kapha and in the spring because with with the due to increase of the heat uh it's uh, kapha is cumulative kapha is liquefied by the heat of the sun and that disturbs the our digestive process so, so th- this is one way the melon would be the uh, great, ideal great, ideal yes. it will be very ideal very ideal so to do it and then you know uh, if you do too much of it which i doubt you would be able to do n- i'd never seen anybody eating too much of bitter melon but some of us are that much crazy sometimes uh you know i'm an example i sometimes like to uh, go on bitter melon quite a bit uh but it can vitiate the vata that mean it can cause a vata imbalance in the body so you don't want to do too much but the people folks who are kapha dominated uh, constitution and also have build up extra weight in your body the best thing for you to do is uh, uh, consume bitter melon on you know at least two three times in a week uh, as a part of your diet so that would be excellent and then the six taste is astringent which is much more on the drying side and it is uh, you know it actually helps to uh, balance out the kapha and pitta in the body and the vata uh, you know it can aggravate vata if you do too much of it and the lots of uh, you know the astringents are in the our uh, uh, spices and some of the you know the uh, mint families uh, can have you know, and the eucalyptus type of plant can have that so these are the things which we have the six taste which we need to balance out routinely and uh, anyway uh, so you know uh, i think uh, i would like uh, dr anju you to come back on these tastes after this short break uh, we will be taking so folks we are talking about the ritu charya and in order to call us at the studio 18443011250 18443011250 pe aap hamare sath phone pe baat kar sakte hain 18443011250 If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Are you looking for quality ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. 
Panch Karma detox treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Thank you, folks. This is Dr. Shalinda Sodi, and we are discussing Ritu Charya which is a seasonal routine. And like we mentioned earlier that there are six seasons, actually, rather than the four seasons, which is much more a concept in the, m- uh, in the West. And we will be uh, doing uh, uh, these, uh, you know, six season based diet, actually. So again, uh, the six season which we have Dr. Anju, according to Ayurveda, is like Shishir, which is a late winter. Uh, the time frame for that is from mid January to mid March. Mm-hmm. So we are kind of coming to the late winter right now. That it will be ending by the mid-March. And then we have uh, Vasant, which is uh, springtime, uh, which begins from the mid-March to mid-May, according to Ayurvedic text. Then we have uh, the hot weather, the spring, uh, the when spring ends, and the Grisham becomes, and that's the summer. So that usually mid-May to mid-July. And then we have uh, Varsharitu, and, uh, you know, the, that is actually stands for the rainy season from mid-July to mid-September. Then we have a Sharad, which is a, like uh, autumn, and which is a time frame from mid-September to mid-November. And then we have the hay month, which is the end of the uh, uh, autumn season and uh, early winter, mid-November to mid-January. We do have a caller on the line, and I would like to take that call before we uh, indulge into the further. So, caller, go ahead. This is Dr. Shalinder Sodi on the show, Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. Hi there. I had a question, actually, regarding the upcoming time change that we're going to experience. It tends to take a huge emotional and physical toll on most people, I've noticed. And I was wondering if you had any recommendations on how to overcome losing that hour of sleep and the impact it has on your following week. Man, that is an w- excellent Actually, question. Actually, it's a beautiful question for the students. <laughs> students, but also for, for the, the uh, everybody, uh, uh, everybody. everybody. Actually, I'm telling you, on top of seasonal routine changes, we have this time change, which actually is the only concept in America, I think. Yes. Nowhere in the world, every we see this kind of change. And some of the even states within America don't change the time. I mean, Arizona is an example of that. They keep their time frame whole year. Rest of the world just change their work schedule according to the you know I time how they the want to. that is the best pattern. Right. But anyway, now the, you know, caller, this is an excellent question. For so thank you for asking. I think that one hour of time difference does put a whole lot of toll on a sleeping pattern because all of a sudden, if you are kind of you know we say in the spring ahead that means the time will be changed from uh, we will be one hour ahead from our uh, usual time so uh, that mean you will be getting up one hour early <laughs> in order to maintain the same routine and that is a short sleep and uh, it's it is a v- huge difference for getting somebody who's maybe having sleep issues or the students who are already actually sleep deprived have a stress, it actually increases vata in the body, Dr. Anju. Uh, you know, yes. you can, uh, so what it means, the vata aggravation will lead to an adrenal fatigue, which leads to the, uh, the your uh, caller, your question was, leads to fatigue. That's the reason why you get fatigue. So what you need to do is actually, I mean, this will be very particular to the people uh, who live in the United States who have to go through with this type of time change, is to, you know, actually getting settled uh, with your routine. That means I will probably say you need to hit the bed early even though you're not going to sleep. Yeah, and uh, by taking like little bit of the, I suggest to some of my patients, by ashwagandha is great, that helps to sleep and little bit of the melatonin taking in the like the first few days also helpful too because uh, we don't wa- we don't feel like sleeping early and then there is a time difference. We have to get up early. So uh, by doing that uh, is not harmful. And uh, taking ashwagandha will help with the, as I, Dr. Shalinder mentioned, the adrenal fatigue. So ashwagandha is great for that too. And uh, that will help like for the first few days. I right. Think. It's like uh, you getting into uh, adjusting to the time zone difference. You know, it's, a, it's a just like that. Just like that. So, you know, the people who kind of travel to the East Coast, West Coast, sometimes have to f- force the time change as well 
So it's a similar thing when we kind of do the time changes. And by the way, the time change will happen on March 12th mm -hmm. of this year. And uh, the, so, you know. And that is the holy too. Uh, and then that's also the, the festival of color on that very particular day. So I would suggest hydrating more. Hydration is very important because that's, uh, that really helps. Uh, as well and then you know taking uh, ashwagandha and maybe and you few know, days for melatonin. Yes and for the students like the less caffeine. Well you know but if somebody needs a push I will say <laughs> go ahead uh, you can grab your coffee. Or well in the tea. evening if they are having and they have to sleep early then the caf coffee can like really uh, come in in between. And that might um, to my listeners that might surprise that I have a little bit soft spot but I don't I mean I recommend very moderate use. The green teas are also very good substitute, yes. which comes with lots of antioxidants and have been shown to be very beneficial. So caller, thank you for calling for that uh, call and we will go uh, get back to our Ritu Charas and the seasonal routine. So anyway, uh, yeah, like Dr. Anju, I was saying, uh, you know, the one of the best thing is the Panch Karma during this time of the year, which I recommend highly if anybody have to do a detox. Uh, springtime is the great uh, time and like they can start doing their uh, uh, in the early late uh, like as we talk like we are in the season until the March uh, 15th or so like the late winter and then the spring will start. Uh, we can start preparing our body like we mentioned already like there is accumulation of kapha in our, um, in our system during the winter season and then with the uh, in increase in the heat that starts to um, uh, like the uh, melting so we need and that like is also uh, affecting our digestive system and then like we need to like as I, we mentioned that starting to start to eat like more lighter food and the fasting and that's the best w time to because uh, to prepare the body for the panch karma. Right. So mm, folks uh, those of you who don't know what panch karma is panch karma actually stands for the five step detox again this is for we call it detoxification and rejuvenation. So it's uh, like uh, uh, doing a whole Shuddhi Karan of the body and in, uh, including Baji Karan at the end that means just building the body's strength. So that is the Panch Karma which is a unique uh, into Ayurveda. So when we do these five steps uh, there is a, a, a Purva Karma which is mean the preparing the body and at our clinic at yeah. uh, Ayurvedic Naturopathic Medical Clinic in Bellevue we do this. We do this at the office and uh, uh, with the like the with the guidance on the diet and everything. So, so we, we guide our patients yeah. to what they should be doing before we start the uh, uh, the, uh, the Karms which are the f you know the Panch Karms. So, so that we, you know you get really benefited, benefited during this time of the year. Yeah, but so we need to first prepare the body. It's called the oleation, internal oleation. So uh, that how we do that, like uh, uh, we eat some more oils. Uh, it's a different oils. We prepare the body by uh, taking the ghee, a little bit of the ghee, some coconut oil, avocado oil, or the fish oil, flax oil. And uh, that is uh, that really helps to uh, build our internal oleation, and then. So the part of doing this is, uh, Dr. Anju, is that reason we do this internal oleation is the majority of toxins are stored in the fat in layers. In the fat layers. And that is actually sitting right beneath the skin, and the toxins which are stored in the fat layer do not get mobilized until we provide that fat molecules to start kind of mixing them mixing up. that yes so the uh, oleation internal oleation when we do that actually helps to start the process of detoxification Detox. so people think okay that mean i can oleate whole year around no you no. can't you have to if you're going to do punch karam only then you need to oleate that means that's when we say all right you're allowed to take two ounces or three ounces of ghee or the oil uh, for drinking for yeah, these Yeah, and it days. all depends on the, like, the how much body some uh, particular body The constitution body can, wise. Constitution wise to how much you can handle and uh, also along with the, because the, if you are eating the fats, it has more calories, then you will be on the lighter diet, very light diet. Right. Too. And so, you know, the internal oleation is uh, started with, and then we, once we start the karmas, that's when we start with the abhyangas, or the Ayurvedic massages that actually helps 
to do the lymphatic drainage lymphatic and the moving lymphatic drainage and then the uh, like the how the uh, abhyanga the ayurvedic massage it helps like the it 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 it's a marma point massage too so it's we try to bring the toxin as dr shilander mentioned the is in the fat layer fat tissue so by that we try toxins it goes into the circulation and the through the lymphatic drainage then we uh, person sits into the infrared or the dry sauna or the steam sauna infrared sauna is the best right and usually uh, you know if the idea of is to increase the body temperature to, yeah, to, to get you know, rid of the toxins right so it's like we got call it swedan so swedan is when we want your body to perspire to sweat and you know that actually really helps to get the detoxification remember uh, in the your skin is a, like i call it a third kidney it has almost same function as your original kidneys in the um, abdominal cavity so you know if you sweat you are detoxifying and also uh, we are also mobilizing the fat molecules which are actually circulating and gets into the excretory pathways in the body so swedan is needed but the one thing during swedan is we always want to make sure that your head temperature is kept cool because we don't want to warm up uh, your uh, you know the uh, head too much and then um, uh, dr anju we also uh, recommend usually uh, you know there is a the uh, fasting uh, fasting so that that those massage snehan and swedan uh, at the same time that goes for the like depending on the person's constitution uh, or the health issues it goes for the Five to six weeks, and then you go for a fasting. It's a uh, juice like fasting, no grains, no meats, um, all the vegetables and the fruits with some herbs and spices. And the last part, and then you again go for the massage, snehan and swedan for two more weeks, and depending on your constitution. And then the last part is the colonics. So with the, the basti, yes. we call it the basti karam. The basti karams are usually again uh, can be done with the colon irrigations. Or uh, or virechanas or uh, we uh, can recommend uh, you know there are two types of either with the colonics uh, which is the animals or the virechans which can be done with the oral and they both have a different way of detoxifying the upper GI and the lower GI so virechans are usually good when we do the oral type is clear help with the upper GI. upper gastrointestinal where are the uh, animals for the lower gi lower gi and then the f- last the fifth karm is actually part of is the baji karan where we actually rebuild the body to re-strengthen with the herbs like ashwagandha and makuna and uh, trifol which helps to rejuvenate your body so that's one way of it uh, some of the other karms which are like uh, vaman and uh, uh, and rakt moksha are very much individualized it that's based on if somebody needs it or not and then also uh, uh, dr anju you had other suggestion yeah so exercise is very important yoga is very important during this time too we are running short of time and uh, and also like the day sleeping we should avoid the day sleeping during the spring time you do not want to do day sleep because it increases the kapha and it will will build up more heaviness though in the summer time you can get away with a little nap to help but that's a uh, that's a that's a different uh, uh, time of the year but uh, during the spring time you definitely don't want to do too much of day sleeping either like dr anju said in fact you want to start exercising and uh, yoga and try to do some of the you know the body building type of exercise you can do but again in the summer you don't want to do extreme exercise but in the spring time we, we can we should be doing little bit more exercise little bit more cardio and uh, yoga so that would be very beneficial so you know like uh, in the uh, like the as as we mentioned like uh, earlier too like the oils like the ghee can be eaten but like little bit more of the uh, uh, sunflower seed oil is also good and uh, eating the uh, mustard oil is mustard oil is like in india we use mustard oil a lot and that is good in the spring season too so uh, actually mustard oil has a little bit of we call a chelating type of properties because it's a uh, oil which is actually sulfur rich compound and we find that it supports the structure the cellular structure so you know that's the science behind the oils but mustard oil has been given a bad rap in the recent years but actually it's not a bad oil at all actually no. it's one of the good oils to have and uh, you know but again 
during the springtime this this is the oil for you to consider so folks uh, uh, that was the sh topic for the today we both practice at ayurvedic naturopathic medical clinic and in order for you to make an appointment with us you can always call us at 425-453-8022 again 425-453-8022 at ayurvedic naturopathic medical clinic in bellevue and we both appreciate uh, listening to our show today and have a wonderful Thanks. afternoon